Image classification has come a long way since the introduction of ResNets. Several modifications of ResNet have been proposed, which when benchmarked against the ImageNet dataset show better and better performance. The model called EfficientNet has been the state of the art for quite some time now. This week, let's have a look at the new architecture called the NFNet introduced in this paper, High Performance Large Scale Image Recognition Without Normalization from DeepMind. It does not have the batch normalization layers and hence it simply is referred to as NFNets and yet beats efficient net. In this video, I'll be starting with a brief overview of batch normalization followed by the drawbacks of batch normalization and the benefits of it. We will then look at gradient clipping and then the adaptive gradient clipping which is the main contribution of this paper and of course we'll then look at the results and the architecture of NFNets. There are plenty of blogs and videos explaining the concept of batch normalization and so we won't go too much into the details. Batch norm was introduced in this paper in ICML 2015 and since then has about 25,000 citations. When we typically pass input data through a neural network, the data is usually normalized which with the mean of all the inputs lying at the center and the variance is usually one. When this data is passed through the network, the mean gets shifted away from the center and even the variance is no longer uh, about one. So batch normalization, as the name says, introduces a normalization layer so that the output from the layer becomes normalized again with the mean shifted to zero and the variance of the data get back to one. And it is quite a common practice to use batch norm in a residual block of a ResNet these residual blocks are then stacked together to form what is called the residual network or simply the ResNet. So a major problem with batch norm is that you need to treat training and inference differently. While you're implementing deep networks in say PyTorch, you might have noticed that you set the model to train or eval mode. That is mainly to take care of the batch norm layers during inference. Another major problem in deep learning is reproducibility. When we train the same model architecture on two different hardwares or GPUs, we often find the results differ and batch normalization seems to be one of the main contributors. Lastly, when there are batch normalization layers in your network, it can only be trained with large batch sizes. As the batch size decreases, training becomes extremely hard and becomes impractical. Now that we know the drawbacks of batch norm layer, the question is, can we not get rid of the batch norm layer and simply use the conv and ReLU layers? For this to happen, we need to first study the benefits that the batch norm layers bring. Once we understand the benefits of batch norm, we can try to mimic the characteristic of the layer, either in some of the layers, or we can even introduce novel layers that replace the batch norm and act as the batch norm layer, but not exactly the batch norm layers. So let's first look at the four benefits of batch norm layers before we try to mimic them. If you look at this example residual block, with each block having a con relu and batch norm layer in sequence, the batch norm layer has this division by the variance of the batch, due to which it gets a scaling effect and this effect is applied only in the residual path and not on the skip path. So the severity of the residual path is reduced. This implies that we can now connect several residual blocks together and train easily. The second benefit is that whenever we input the data to the network, the data is nicely normalized and the data is centered around zero. But when we look at the output of any intermediate layer without the batch norm, the data is shifted away from the mean. The moment we introduce the batch norm layer, the data is shifted back to the center and the mean once again becomes zero. This is a very nice property and it's very much desired in machine learning. A third benefit 
that the batch norm also has is the normalize the regularization effect so the batch norm computes two parameters one is the mean and the other is the variance of the input batch if you look at the mean of the entire training data its mean is not equal to the mean of a single batch similarly if we look at the variance of the entire training data it is not equal to the variance of a single batch in short we can say that the calculated mean and variance are noisy and this noise effect is similar to the other regularization methods like dropouts which introduce noise by switching off some nodes during training and so batch norm is believed to bring in regularization effects to the network to understand the fourth benefit let's look at this loss landscape and let's assume we are moving down this landscape to achieve a minima now if the batch is small it will be biased because it has only a few samples so the loss computed will put it a long way and produce a steep descent in a direction that is not too beneficial as the batch size increases the different samples in the batch will pull the gradient in many possible directions or this prevents a steep descent along the gradient which means that we can use higher values for the learning rate and this is again beneficial now that we have seen both the problems and benefits that batch norm brings let's see if we can remove the batch norm from our network but bring its benefits by some other means so in order to go normalization free our aim is to remove the batch normalization layer and incorporate the four benefits of batch norm that we just saw to do this let's first look at nf resnets or normalization free resnet which was published in iclr uh, this year and is a precursor to this paper we are reading which is nf nets the main contribution of nf resnets paper is the scaled weight standardization so let's look at weight standardization first and then make it scaled weight standardization weight standardization is when you compute the mean and standard deviation of the weights itself instead of the input data as you can see in the figure the normalization resembles that of batch norm but because we want to get rid of the batch norm layer we standardize the weight of the layer to compute w hat so if we consider a tensor with i comma j as the dimension corresponding to c and n in batch norm then w hat is computed by simply subtracting the mean of the ith layer and dividing by the standard deviation of the ith layer scaled weight standardization is when we introduce a scaling parameter n and you modify the equation of weight standardization by dividing the by the square root of n here n is the number of inputs that the layer can accept by introducing the scaling factor nf resnet was able to do a decent job without batch norm layers but somehow the training collapses when the batch size is very large say 4000 or more also the performance was not as good as the state of the art batch norm based networks like efficient net With that information about NF ResNets, let's get to the actual paper we are looking into, which is NF Nets. Not NF ResNet, but NF Nets. The main idea of the paper is the introduction of adaptive gradient clipping. Like our usual approach, let's first look into gradient clipping and then see how it evolves into adaptive gradient clipping. Let's take a simple 3D loss landscape that we are trying to minimize. We compute a gradient and take baby steps down the slope. We usually don't care if the baby step that we take is large or small. Whether your step is this big or it's this big, you just go for it and move on to the next step. In case of gradient clipping, you divide the gradient by its magnitude if it's larger than a constant lambda and only take a small step instead of a large one. In other words, 
you are clipping the gradient. The main problem here is that the threshold lambda we take is a hyperparameter that we choose. So the training becomes extremely sensitive to this lambda. Another problem I see with this is that the gradient clipping equation does not consider the weight itself. So irrespective of the weight or its magnitude, gradient clipping will simply clip the gradient and this is not very efficient. So NFNets introduces a modified version of this gradient clipping called adaptive gradient clipping. In this, the authors introduce the magnitude of the weight in the gradient clipping equation. The intuition is that for any given layer L, the ratio of the magnitude of the weight Wi and the magnitude of the gradient Gi gives an indication of how much the gradient will change. To understand this, let's take two cases with simple toy examples. Let's fix the threshold lambda to 0.3. In the first case, let's say the magnitude of W is 8 and the magnitude of gradient is 2. In this case, gradient clipping doesn't happen because the ratio is less than the threshold lambda. However, in the second case, the magnitude of our weight is 6 and the magnitude of our gradient is 2. Here, the ratio between the two is 0.33, which is more than the threshold 0.3, so the gradient gets clipped. To see how clipping now depends on the magnitude of the weight W, so this is adaptive gradient clipping, as the clipping adapts to the weight. But what I'm struggling to understand here is how this gets rid of the dependency on lambda. Because the argument shown uh, in the paper is that the gradient clipping, the training stability is sensitive to the choice of lambda. And so we need adaptive gradient clipping. But in adaptive gradient clipping, we still have lambda. If I were the author, I would probably argue that we need to consider the magnitude of the weights. So that was the main idea of the paper. Now let's move on to some ab ablation studies. The first plot here shows the comparison of our well-known ResNet versus the NF variants, namely NF ResNet and NFNet. What we notice is that only NFNet survives a huge batch size of 4096, while the others collapse without training properly. So we definitely need adaptive gradient clipping when the batch size is really large. The second plot here shows the model behavior with change in clipping threshold lambda. The they study the traditional ResNet architecture for different thresholds and show that it collapses when the clipping threshold is increased with a batch size of 4096. This again motivates the need for NFNets when the batch size is really large. So for the network architecture, they start with the SE REST Next model architecture. If you're unfamiliar with this term, I recommend taking a look at this paper on REST Next, which is a modified version of ResNet. REST Next adds an additional dimension to the ResNet blocks called the cardinality, and this dimension learns different transformations of the input and so performs better than the ResNet architecture. Squeeze and Excite was a paper introduced in 2019. Uh, the idea of AC block is that you first squeeze the spatial transformation and keep only the channel size, thereby getting a 1 by 1 by C vector. You pass this vector through some form of nonlinearity, which can be learnt. You now recalibrate your output with this vector as shown by different color coding in the figure. By combining these two works, you get what is called the SE REST NEXT block. So this is the SE REST NEXT architecture from the Squeeze and Excite paper. You can see that it has four stages. At each stage, there is a multiplier indicating the number of blocks at that stage. And it's a non-linear increase with the first and last stage as three and the middle ones four and six.
This does not quite seem to capture high level features in the initial layers and low level features in the later layers. So in NFNets, they change this to be multiples of one, two, six, and three. They call the basic network F0 and then the derived bigger networks as multiples of these numbers as F1, F2, etc. The second modification they do is that of the channel output at each stage. This is completely empirical. They found out that the best place to add model capacity is at stage 3. So they increase the number of channels from 1024 to 1536 at stage 3. But in order to compromise computationally, they reduce the channels at stage 4 from 2048 to 1536. So these are the results presented in the paper and no surprises here, NFNets seem to do better than some of the state-of-the-art networks like LambdaNet, Botnet and Data Efficient Image Transform or the DATE in short. So that was NFNets which is one of the first papers that goes normalization free by removing the batch normalization layer and it beats the state-of-the-art networks that have batch normalization layers in them. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next week.